Another Eurozone country might need a financial bailout soon. Italy, which is the third largest economy that uses the euro currency, has started plunging in the same direction as Greece and Ireland. It comes as fresh protests sweep across Europe with people angry at facing tough cuts to pay for it all. Well, let's uh, talk more on this with uh, European Parliament member Nigel Farage, who is the leader of the UK Independence Party. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us here on RT. Now, Good morning. The bailout candidate list seems to be lengthening, doesn't it? As well as Portugal and Spain, Italy seems to be in a precarious position. Now, if the third largest economy succumbs, could that wipe out the euro, in your opinion? Well, of course it could, yes. I mean, Spain's a big economy, Italy's even bigger. I mean, what we have here is we have the bond markets sending us warning signals. I mean, think of them as the canary in the mine shaft, if you like. Um, I, I'm not saying that the bailout crisis will extend to those big countries, but it just could. And certainly, if Spain went down, remember that the debt they've got is about seven times the size of Ireland, so we'd be talking there about 350 billion euros, and Italy bigger still. Uh, and so you get to a point where there is no more bailout money um, and where the euro in its current form would cease to exist. I don't know whether that will happen in the next few weeks, but it remains a real possibility, yes. And of course, uh, there are also fears about Portugal. It's thought that Portugal's under pressure to ask for assistance, and an Irish minister says that Dublin was forced to take the bailout. So is there a clash yeah. here between political pride and the cold economics of the European Central Bank? Well, I don't know. I mean, the cold economics of the European Union's response to the banking crisis since 2008 has been that every single bank um, and every single loan and guarantee must be backed up by governments. Now, if you look at countries like Iceland, where they decided to let some of their commercial banks go bust, you see countries that are now beginning to recover. So that was the decision that was taken in, 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 back in 2008. Uh, so in the case of Ireland, the government had to stand behind banks, banks that had made some very unwise loans, and banks that had been operating within the Eurozone, which, of course, Ireland was never suited to. So the point is this. Whatever we do, let's say that the contagion doesn't go any further than Portugal. Let's say the bailout funds aren't exhausted. That isn't the end of the problem, because what you've now got are countries like Greece, Ireland and potentially Portugal, who are trapped inside an economic prison that is called the euro, for which they are not suited. And, and, and believe you me, the bailout that Ireland saw last week is not the end of the matter. I suspect that things in Ireland economically will be very much worse in two years' time than they are now. OK, but in fairness, the, the European Commission president said on Sunday that the Eurozone isn't to blame for Greece and Ireland's oh. uh, problems and that well, things could have been much worse without the Euro. Isn't there some truth in that? There is not a single piece of evidence for those claims by Barroso or Van Rompuy whatsoever. Listen, when Ireland joined the Euro, there were people like me saying there was no benefit for the country, as most of their overseas trade was denominated in sterling or dollars anyway, and that to join the Euro, they would have to have artificially low interest rates, and for the first seven or eight years of their membership of the Euro, Irish rates were 3 to 4% lower than they would have been had the Irish kept the punt. And what that meant was that the property boom became the most massive speculative bubble, and that's why the bust is as bad as it is. And now Ireland finds herself in a euro where eurozone interest rates are going to head up over the next couple of years at the very moment that they're trapped inside a deflationary downward spiral. All right, well, let's euro have a, let's have a quick has look been at, a catastrophe. Let me just interrupt you there, if I may. I mean, if you look at the, the case yeah. of Britain then, as an, an EU member uh, signed up to take the benefits of European harmony, isn't it right that uh, they chip in when times are hard? You can't have your cake and eat it, well, can you? Well, let's examine what these benefits are, shall we? Um, I've been here for 11 years as an MEP, and I'm still struggling to find them. Because if what we're talking about is free trade, is the ability of companies to buy and sell goods from our next-door neighbouring countries, look, the Swiss do that without being EU members. The Norwegians do that without being EU members. So if what the United Kingdom wants is free trade, she can have that without being part of a club that makes 3,000 new rules for us every year and costs us a membership fee of nearly 50 million billion pounds a day. And the seven billion pounds that the British government has said it will guarantee for the Irish, frankly, is money poured down the drain. What we should be doing is saying to our friends in Ireland, we will help you come out of the euro and get back to having your own currency. Otherwise, frankly, we're wasting this money. 
In a wider sense, though, the global recession would have affected all nations anyway, surely. Isn't it better that Europe acts as a group instead of trying to struggle individually? Look. Of course there's been a global recession, of course everybody's been affected. But the point about this is that we're going for economic and monetary union across the European Union with countries that have such different and divergent currencies. That, I mean, we learned ourselves with the exchange rate mechanism 20 years ago that we weren't suited to it. Sadly, for the Greeks, the Irish, and probably soon the Portuguese, they're having to learn the hard way. And what you need in a recession, and what you need in a global economy, which we're now living in, is you need flexibility and adaptability. And when you join the euro, you give away control over interest rates and now that they've been bailed out, they've given away the ability to decide their own budgets. Greece and Ireland have now become protectorates of the European Union. They've lost their democracy, they've lost their self-government, and I'm deeply fearful. I mean, I, I, I do feel that extreme political groups, um, even violent political groups, will now be on the rise because if people feel they can't alter their own destiny by voting, what are they left with? Let's turn to Germany then. And German taxpayers seem to be... Uh bearing uh, quite a lot of the burden for all these, these yeah. bailouts. Uh, how long do you think it will be before the Germans become angry enough to stop paying out for other countries' failures? You mentioned anger there. Yeah, well, I'm married to a German, <laughs> and, uh, sh and she'll tell you uh, that they've paid a very big bill since 1990 to reintegrate Eastern Germany back into Western Germany. They're now being asked to pay a bill many times the size of that to bail out countries like Greece and Ireland and Portugal and who knows who else. There is no question that had the German people been asked, did they want to give up the Deutsche Mark and take the Euro, there would have been an overwhelming no. But in Germany, as around the rest of Europe, we have a political class that has attempted to impose its own world view on people without ever asking their opinion. I was in Germany a couple of months ago in Berlin. I spoke at a meeting of people who want the Deutsche Mark back, and I was impressed. There were lawyers, university professors, hedge fund managers, some very serious people in the room saying, we want to get the hell out of the euro, we want the Deutsche Mark back. Now, Angela Merkel is playing a clever game because she was the first person to suggest that perhaps the private holders of bonds in Ireland and Greece may not get the full face value of their bonds back when it comes to maturity. That sends a message that maybe it won't just be German taxpayers that have to bail things out, and that's why she did it. I, 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 I mean, frankly, um, if Germany said we've had enough of this, that would be the end of the euro. I don't think we've reached that moment politically yet. I think it's more likely that Greece and Ireland will be ejected, but don't expect the Germans to bankroll the EU forever. They simply won't do it. You say ejected there. Do you think any, any country would voluntarily leave the euro and to have the, their current CD valued? Uh, well, they should do, but of course they won't, because what you have in Ireland and what you have in Greece are the same kind of political class that we have across the rest of Europe, um, and they've been set on this path of creating a European state for several decades now. They can't admit to themselves or their publics that they've got it horribly wrong. They can't admit that what we should be doing in Europe is having a trade organisation where we cooperate together but don't attempt political union. Um, so, no, they're not going to do it. And what we're going to see, we're going to see the rise of new political parties. We're going to see some massive changes in European politics over the next couple of years. I hope and pray that it won't be extreme nationalist groups that benefit from this, but I fear that it may be. I mean, despite all the troubles, for example, Estonia is, is looking to join the euro by two, 2011, I should say. Uh, why would the zone accept new members amid all this struggle? Oh, because this is an empire. Uh, Mr. Broso once said, I think two years ago, he said that uh, the European Union was the first ever non-military empire. And what empires try to do is expand. So they'll have Estonia into the euro, um, and they'll try and make Croatia join the European Union next year or the year after. They think that all the while they're expanding, uh, people will say, well, it must be going well, and it'll take their attention away from what's going on within. Sadly, it's too late. And all the opinion polls show that in Germany, in Greece, in Britain, in Ireland, and right across the European Union, increasingly the publics of Europe are holding the political class that have done this to them in increasing contempt. OK, we'll have to leave it there, Nigel Farage. Thank you very much indeed for your forthright views thank here you. live on RT.